Hello, I'm Tom from Against Me. I'm here in Brooklyn, and you're watching Project Green Room. A teenage anarchist looking for revolution. I have the style, I have the ambition. So here you are, Tom from Against Me, Brooklyn, New York. You guys just kicked off your summer headlining tour, leading up to Warp Tour. A few days in, how's it been so far? Oh, it's been fantastic. Nice. Really cool. We got a real good uh, dynamic between all the bands going on, and the shows have been fun, and the hangs have been good too. Awesome. Now, how'd you guys choose uh, scre screaming females in the area? I'm a fan. Um, I, 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 fan of both of the bands and then also we have a bunch of mutual friends although our, our paths had never crossed so I, I was just guessing that it'd be you know a, a good fit and everything so killer lineup yeah now you guys just announced some big news just a few days ago the your own record label yes full travel music mm -hmm. now what made you you know after being on majors indies you know everything in between what made you finally decide you know this is what we want to do well I mean you answered the question almost in a sense there is that we you know we've been on every kind of type of label that you can be on really and uh you know for me all the experiences that we had and a lot of the choices that we made all along the way was about gaining knowledge you know and, and about like well how do this how does this type of label do it you know and 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 i was trying to pay attention the whole time you know um so when we ended our relationship with cyber warner this past fall um we didn't really know what we were going to do and we you know, we just kind of took a second and a couple people came our way with offers and, and nothing just really seemed right, you know, and, and it's like, uh, you know, in this day and age for me, like I wanted to do something that, that felt exciting, you know, as far as, e even if it's not necessarily exciting to other people, but to me, you know, like, and it's definitely something that takes us out of our comfort zone and, and really like puts all the responsibility kind of on us. So. It's almost scary in a sense, but... For sure, but that's good. It. You know, that shakes you up and as a songwriter, putting yourself in situations like that, that's where you get results. When you're comfortable and complacent, nothing fun ever happens, right. you know? So we'll see what happens. Now, do you guys plan to put other bands on the label or for now or just... Um, hopefully, you know, I definitely would love to. Um, right now, the, you know, we, we hope to be ready to record our next record by the end of... End of the, the year, you know, so, uh, and then we have a, a couple other plans already in the works for the label, so. Oh, nice. Now you guys, speaking of new songs, you just are, you're going to release uh, 7 Inch Digital Split June 14th. Yes. Uh, two new songs. Are these songs that you kind of, are they like White Cross's demo, like B-sides, are they newer songs you kind of did? No, they're, they're newer songs, you know, we, uh, we, we got asked to do um, the theme song for One Tree Hill this okay. past, uh, this past fall. And uh, so we had a break in between tours that we did um, earlier this year, right. and it was like a week and a half break that kind of left us nowhere near Florida, right. and uh, realized we were close to Madison. So I was like, oh, we should go into Smart, and we could record the theme song. And then while we're there, you know, I have these songs I've been working on, and the song is like, I, I, I'm really stoked on the songs, I, and but I don't feel like they're necessarily indicative of the direction that, that we're going for in the next record. So oh, wow. they just kind of feel like, you know, you have these songs, what do you do with them? And it just seemed like they'd be a good 7-inch. So we went in and recorded them and had a good time with it. Now 7-inch, a lot of bands are releasing vinyl, a lot of fans are picking up vinyl now. How do you feel about 7-inch vinyl coming back into, you know, music basically? Well, I mean, for us, that's, you know, it's never really gone away or right. anything. You know, I mean, our when we set out as a band, other than putting out a demo tape, the main goal was like release a seven inch. Right. And the first time you put out a seven inch and you you press five hundred or a thousand, you're like, oh my god, how are we ever going to sell this many records? Right. You know? right. Um, so for us, that's always been kind of the the principal format. And the only time I've ever felt like a, an album really exists is when you're holding the vinyl in your hand. You know, I mean, a CD is just such a disposable thing. You know. Um, but uh, you know, and then personally, was apart from being in a band, like I, I collect vinyl. That's okay. that's my preferred, you know, medium to listen to music. On. Makes you get into music. You actually have to flip the record, and you know. Oh, that's great. Like an iPod. Yeah. You're not even paying attention. To music. No, I, you know, and it's interesting too because it's like I have a, you know, a however many gig iPod that has right. however many albums <laughs> on there, and it's like I'll f just flip through there, you know, for like 10, 15 minutes, and just have no desire you to listen to anything, anything on there. Way. You know, it's like nothing. Exactly. That, now, new direction on the album. One thing I think a lot of people respect about you guys is, you know, even from reinventing Axl Rose, you guys still owe it to White Crosses, which came out almost a year ago today, right? Yeah, what is today? Today's the fifth, so maybe the seventh. It came the out seventh. on the seventh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost, yeah. Almost. Although it leaked a little bit before yeah, that. Yeah, so. <laughs> <I mean, April. laughs> But 
you know, with the, you know, from the first album, you know, the rawness, the motion, you know, the honesty, it still transpired through every album all the way to White Crosses, but you guys evolved, you know, you went, you know, to more of a rock sound, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. How do you guys still keep, you know, that loyal, you know, punk rock fan base, if you call it, throughout <laughs> going, you know, it's rough, but. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I, I, you know, not purposely, but I think we've done a good job of shaking a lot of that, you right. know, just with the decisions we've made, but, uh. <laughs> It's it, you know it's one of those things where I think that you have to look at the songwriting process and the recording process as two totally different things. For me, you know, songwriting, writing lyrics, and writing music are something that I have a natural inclination to want to do, and something that I feel fairly comfortable in saying that I have a little bit of talent at doing. You know, it, it, it comes naturally right. to me to do that. The recording process is something that doesn't. You know, it's it's something that. First time you go into a music studio, you're like, holy shit, yeah. you know, what are all these knobs and these <laughs> faders, and I have no idea what anything do does. Um, so, you know, each record we've made, we've been fortunate that we've had a little more time in the studio, and, and right. every time you go in there, you feel a little more comfortable, and then we've also been really fortunate to work with some people who are really, you know, uh, cool with showing us how stuff works, yeah. you know, so each time you make a record, you get a little closer to achieving the sound that you hear in your head, you know, and, and each time you make a record also, it's a collaborative effort with the person that you're making the record. Exactly. With, you know? Now, writing for you, when, you know, when you were younger and you started playing guitar, writing songs, what was kind of like your influence? What made you want to get a guitar and start writing? You know, I, I remember one of my first musical memories, I was probably five years old, we lived in Fort Hood, Texas, and Madonna was on TV, and I remember mm -hmm. looking at her and just being like, that's fantastic, you know, like, I could do that, I, I, there's no reason why I couldn't do that, and uh, I just remember being obsessed with that, and, and I, I started playing guitar when I was like eight years old, I saved okay. up my money from mowing lawns and washing cars right. and, and ordered a Harmony acoustic guitar out of a wow. Sears catalog, which is a terrible guitar to learn how to play <laughs> guitar on just because the action is so hot. <laughs> yeah, for, I mean, for an eight-year-old kid trying to make chords on that, it was torture, I had no calluses or anything, <laughs> but um, so, you know, I just was always fascinated by music and musicians and, and I, I, I mean, I, I grew up in a military family and I grew up on army bases and so there was no real like older scene to look up to or anything like that. So a lot of my music was just based on that album cover looks cool. You know, like the first tape I ever bought was Def Leppard Hysteria because okay. that album cover looks kind of cool. Right, right. And I always had a varied musical collection where it was, you know, the metal bands or U2 and then New Kids on the Block and MC Hammer, you know, and, and a really you just kind of go in off of what you hear, you know, and what you like. Now, for you, uh, you released in 2008 a uh, soul record. That had more of like, you know, folk aspect, acoustic. You can hear a lot of Bob Dylan influence in there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Bob Dylan, a song about Bob Dylan on the White Cross, and right. the B-side. Mm -hmm. Is he one of your, you know, look up to guys? Oh, I love Dylan, right. for sure. I mean, for me, when I listen to music, I can't listen to stuff if it doesn't have intelligent lyrics. Okay. Sometimes I can if the melody is hooky enough, right. but I, I, for me, I look at if someone's a good lyricist, I'm into their band no matter what, usually. Um, and Dylan obviously writes fantastic lyrics, you know? Now, writing for you, do you keep a journal? Do you use you know, an iPhone or are you even old school? I, I keep a journal. I. I I'll write stuff down on my phone if it's you know right. comes to me when I don't have a notebook. I try to carry a notebook on me whenever I can, and then uh, yeah, I mean it, it's something that you learn after a while that just you know whenever an idea comes to you, you have to be ready to, to right. kind of capture it and write it down, and then. You know, a lot of the times too, I'll approach songwriting where it's like you, you get a bunch of ideas randomly written down and then you have a moment and sit down and just write down everything you have collected in a notebook or on your cell phone or whatever and, and kind of see what the hell your brain was <laughs> trying to tell you, you know? I was, I was, I was talking with my, my wife the other night on the phone and she was telling me how she was reading something or whatever that was saying how like, you know how whenever you you know, you're trying to think of something with a group of friends like, ah, oh, you know, what was that right, man's right. name or something like that and it doesn't come to you and then a couple days later or however long yeah. later it'll suddenly come to you. Exactly. The thing that she was reading was saying that your brain never actually stops thinking about that stuff. You know, it's that the moment it comes to you, your brain finally figured it out right. and connected the dots. And I really like that thought in regards to thinking about it in songwriting, where if you're like ever like, ah, oh, you know, it'd be really cool to write a song about this subject or about this feeling, but it doesn't come to you immediately. And then all of a sudden you're walking down a street or you're in the middle of the night, you wake up and the song comes to you. It's just that it took your brain that long to figure it out and get you that. So. Three in the morning, just like, oh. You never know. Exactly. You never know when it's going to come. Now, you mentioned your wife. Now, you guys are to on tour you know, most of the year. Mm -hmm. That's how you guys, you know, get out there. But how do you deal with relationships back at home? 
Um, it's it's tough. You know, I have a small daughter, and uh, I definitely miss her. You know, right. when I'm on tour, they come out and visit whenever they can. Right. Um, she's too young to ride on the bus right now, and too young to be really in the van when we're in a van. But um, you know, you kind of look and see where there's days where it makes sense for them to come out and visit on tour. I'm I'm really lucky in that I met my wife while touring. She toured for years too, so she understands it. She gets that it's not like Ooh, Ooh, we're partying yeah. all the time. A lot of the time, you're just sitting in a dimly lit green room. Yeah. <laughs> With chips and salsa. Right. Not glamorous at all. Yeah. <laughs> now, a couple, well, that's three weeks ago, you released Total Clarity, mm -hmm. which is demos, B sides, all the you know nitty gritty stuff from searching for a form of clarity. How was it to go back and kind of hear these demos? Like, were you like, what the hell were we thinking? It's or? embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, to be honest, that's usually the way it is when you can go back to, and listen to the actual full length. Right. But, um, you know, we, we've done that with every record. We've mm -hmm. recorded multiple versions of every song. Um, and, you know, going back to talking about Bob Dylan, the bootleg series that he did is really what has inspired me in a lot of ways to go and pursue doing these projects. We did one with our second full length, As the Eternal right. Cowboy, and, and then, you know, we're not, unfortunately, we're not doing them in order of the releases, <laughs> but it's more of a, okay, well, they're projects that it's kind of like when you have the time, you get to it, you know, like as opposed to it being your main focus, because right. the main focus is making new music. But, um, you know, it's something that I definitely think is more of a, you know, a collection of songs that's directed towards fans who are already have heard the record and if they're interested in seeing how songs progressed and, and how ideas were formed, then I'd like to share it with them. Yeah, totally see it. And lastly, you guys, this tour is leading up to the Vans Warped Tour, mm -hmm. and you guys are heading out about half of it, most of it. We're doing like the first two weeks and then the last three weeks. Right, so, so skipping the East Coast, doing these headlines. Yeah, shows. I mean, that, that was kind of the reasoning behind it, is we right. wanted to do a headlining run and couldn't do both. So. Yeah. Now, how is it, you guys have been on Warped Tour before, obviously. Yeah. What keeps you going back there? 17 years. I think this is the 17th year. Well, it. we um, haven't been doing no, it. No, 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 no. Years. But 17 <laughs> years, it's still running. What keeps you guys going back there? Um, you know, we, we did it in 2006 and we did it in 2008, and both years were totally different experiences. Right. Um, I, I, I'll be honest that I had an amazing time in 2006, and I didn't have that good of a time in 2008. I think, you know, from a band perspective, looking at it, you're exposed. You're exposing your band to a huge audience that's yeah. not your own. So it's an incredible opportunity there to play to a bunch of people. Definitely. Um, then from the the behind the scenes kind of aspect, in 2006 it was just the most amazing summer ever. I spent the summer hanging out with Joan Jett and the Black Eyes, <laughs> the fucking Buzzcocks, the Germs, um, No Effects, yeah. Bouncing Souls, and it was like every day was a barbecue. Every day was a hang. The show was just a minor side <laughs> of your day. Um, so it was like this just an awesome time, you know? Um, and then this summer, we knew that Lucero was doing it, so right. we're like, okay, we can hang with, with Lucero all summer, this will be awesome, let's do it. Well, thanks for hanging out at the Aquarium Weekly. Uh, yeah. We'll see you guys later tonight, and we'll see you at Warped Tour. Sounds and good. Can't wait to hear the new album, and thanks, meet you, hopefully. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for hanging out.